This is the rhino duck and you can see what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of spheres and instead of doing things like we've done before we're going to take some existing solids and we're going to deform them using control points. So the first thing we can do is we can select both of our spheres. We can go to the edit menu, go to control points, and we can turn control points on. I could also do that by pressing the F10 key. So these are my control points and you can see they look like a cage. If I select a control point and I'm using the gumball here and drag a control point you can see how that moves my surface around. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to turn my control points off. What I would like to do though is have more control points because that makes it a little easier to modify. So I'm going to select all of my curves and I'm going to go to Edit, Rebuild. Now this will tell me how many control points I have or how many UV coordinates I have. I'm going to drop this down to 8. I'm going to drop this down to 8 as well. This is a decent number. If there's too few, it's too hard to control, make a decent surface. If there's too many, it's very hard to control. Once I'm done with that, I'll just click on OK. And this is what we want. We want more of what are called the isoparms, which means we're going to have more control points. I'm going to select the head that I have here. I'm going to use the smaller sphere for the head. And I'm going to click up here to hide objects. So that's just going to put that away for now. And I'm going to select the larger sphere that I'm going to use for the body and I'm going to go and turn my control points on again and you can see now I have more control points. The first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to flatten out the bottom of my duck. So in my front viewport here I'm going to click and drag a window to select the bottom six control points. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the bottom six control points. And you can see what I've actually done is I've selected a lot more control points because some of the control points are directly behind the others. So what that means is I've selected all the control points on the bottom. And I'm going to go to the Transform menu, select Set XYZ Coordinates. And I only want to set Z. So, okay, so you can see now what I'm doing is I'm dragging the bottom part of this sphere and I'm flattening it out. I'm going to go about halfway between the two big grid lines here and that flattens out the bottom for the body. I'm going to do the same thing for the top control points. I'm going to go to the transform menu, set XYZ coordinates. Set Z is still the only one checked, doesn't change. Click on OK, drop that down, and there is the start to my body. Now, continuing on in the front viewport, and this is actually going to be the side of my duck. These terms are not really critical, but I'm going to use this for the side of my duck. I'm going to click on drag a window around these two points. Remember I'm dragging a window, I'm not selecting the points. And I'm going to drag that out and up to make the tail. And you can see what I've done here is I'm actually moving two points because they're right one right behind each other. And I can play around a little bit, make the tail a little thinner. Not really critical, but just makes it look a little more interesting. Okay, so that's the body of the duck. Now, next step I'm going to have is I'm going to bring the head back. There's the head. And I'm going to turn on the control points for the head. And I will make the beak. I'll go into the front viewport zoom in on the head a bit. I'm going to drag a window again around these two control points and I'm going to drag them out and up. There's my beak. 
I'm going to grab these two control points too and I'm going to drag them down a little bit just to narrow the beak a bit. So there is the head for my duck. Okay, so now I'm going to go and turn off my control points because I'm done doing all of my modeling. Now, after this point, I can't really make any more changes because what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start slicing into the surfaces here and cutting parts of it away. And as soon as I start doing that, I can't really go back and start modifying my control points. Now, at this point, you'll notice that under materials, I have two. I have the body color and I have the beak color. Well, problem is, if I try and color the beak, it colors the entire head. So what I need to do is separate out part of the head to make sure, and that will be my beak. So I'm going to go back to my front viewport here, and I'm going to go to Edit, sorry, Curve, Freeform, Control Points. So this is like back in AutoCAD when we did a control point curve. And I'm going to start up here and I'm going to draw kind of an S-shaped curve. Now I want to make sure I start kind of high up above, not too close to the head. You can actually see, even though it looks like this is the outline of the head, if I turn on shaded mode, you can see that's not the outline of the head. The actual head starts a little bit away from that line. So I want to make sure that this curve cuts right through the entire head. If it stays anywhere inside of it, it's not going to work. So I'm going to use this curve to cut the beak part off. To cut the beak part, may start with making sure nothing is selected. So press Escape, and that will clear anything that's selected. I'm going to go to the Edit Mode, and I'm going to choose Split. Now, the first thing it's asking for is the object to split. So I've got to select the head first, and then press Enter when done. Press Enter. Now it's asking for the cutting objects. So I'm going to select the line, press Enter when done, and press Enter. Okay, so did that actually do anything? Well, notice how if I click on the beak, only the beak is selected. Click on the head, only the head is selected. So now I've got two different parts. And if I drag my beak color onto the beak, there it is. Now you can see that my duck has a different colored beak from a head. I'm going to go ahead and delete this line. I don't need that line anymore. All right, so we're mostly done the duck. Now what we've got to do is join the head to the body. Now this is a quick way of doing it. It doesn't come up with the best results, but it's a fairly fast way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all select the entire head and move it a little closer to the body. So just till it's just about touching. And I'm going to go to the curve menu, select line and single line. I'm going to draw a line through the body and this is going to represent where I'm going to cut through the body to make a hole in the body. I'm going to repeat that last command. Remember, you can right-click the mouse button to repeat the last command. I'm going to draw another line right through here. And again, I've got to remember to make these lines so that they're big enough that they will cut all the way through. Let me just double-check with shaded mode. Yep, okay, those are going to cut all the way through. So now I'm going to use the trim command. Edit and trim. My cutting objects, I'm going to select the two lines that I made, press enter. Objects to cut, I'm going to click on the bottom of the head and that part of the body. Press enter to finish. All right, so now I can see that, yep, I have made a hole in the body and a hole in the head. So those are going to press delete. I can get rid of those lines now. 
So what I want to do now is I want to blend these two surfaces together. So I'm going to select Surface, Blend Surface. I'm going to select the edge of the hole that I made in the body. Now, if you find that you're only getting part of the curve, you might need some help because you might have done something there. There is a mistake that's common. I'm going to select the part of the head. Okay, so I should see two circles. Press Enter and OK. So that creates the neck. This is not the best way of blending surfaces. Two surfaces that are blended together shouldn't be so different. This is a circle, this is an ellipse. You can see there's a little wrinkle in there. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. But I'm going to add that color. And now you can see I've got a neck for my duck. So the last thing we need to do is we need to add the eyeball onto the duck. Now the eyeball has already been built. This is a neat thing about working with programs is sometimes you can bring in things from other files. So I'm going to go to File and this time I'm going to Import. What this means is I'm going to bring in another file. Now this file is in your Rhino folder under Duck Parts. If you take a look in there, you will see there is a file. This is a full Rhino file called Duck Eyeball. I'm going to open that up. And you can see there is the Duck's Eyeball. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take that. I'm going to use the Gumball tool here to move it around in space. And I can move it. I can also rotate it if I click on this because I'd like to rotate it and move it and put it onto my duck's head. And kind of once it's there, maybe just tweak it a bit. Maybe it's a bit of an angle. There we go. Okay, so there is one eyeball there. So now the next thing I need to do is to, I need to make a copy of that. So I'm going to select the eyeball. I'm going to go to Transform and Mirror. Now, because my duck is symmetrical, it's sitting right here nicely halfway on the x-axis, I can just click x-axis, and now my duck has two eyeballs. And that's it. There's how to make the rubber duck. Now, if you want, you can certainly go ahead and change the colors. So here is the body color. So you can go here, maybe you would like a green duck with a purple beak, yeah, whatever you think looks good.